Sex is good, it's natural and healthy. And yet we manage to transform the act of making love and making babies in one of the most sinful activities on earth. First, we don't know anything about it. There's a recent study showing that in France, one out of four teenage girls does not know that she has a clitoris. In the US, twen only 22 states out of the 50 are supposed uh, required to include sex education in their curriculum. So the level of information is extremely low. And this leads to the existence of lingering myths. Myths about periods, for example, being taboo and in many places uh, girls or women with periods cannot go to class, cannot prepare sushi or enter holy temples, uh, which can seem anecdotal but also prevents many girls in many countries from going to school. And other myths about sexuality. One about men, right? Men being sexual predators. Men being always interested in, in sex. They think about sex all the time. They are always up for it. And the opposite. Women being not really interested in sex. Women looking only for a mate, not really for fun. Or, at the opposite, the myth of women uh, who are temptress and who are actually enjoying sex, but uh, who are the, the source of all evil. All these myths um, are still conditioning the way we perceive sexuality. And many studies have shown that they are wrong. Many men don't show as much uh, sexual desire. Some uh, women and, and many women do actually have more sexual desire than men. But the fact that they've been either abused or raped or simply socialized to the fact that it's not that okay for a woman to show or to say that she enjoys sex just makes her be more uh, discreet and less vocal about it. So we still have a huge importance of these myths in, in our culture. And these myths have a very important uh, consequences. There is a, a fear from frightened patriarchal men on the power of the female, right? Um, on the power that women have had since ages of giving birth. And this fear has been transformed in a will to control uh, women's sexual life and sexual freedom in different aspects. We can relate it to uh, the witch hunt that took place uh, from the 15th to the 18th century in Europe and in America. Out of the 100,000 people who were convicted of witchcraft during this period, 50,000, half of them, were actually executed and 80% of them were women. Mostly women who were free or trying to be free from patriarchal rules, uh, sometimes elderly women, uh, but women who tried to challenge the, the norms of, um, of the church and of the surrounding society. They were crushed and we can talk about a, a gender uh, mass um, eradication. This is still happening today, the, the, the myths that we have about uh, male uh, predatory sexuality and the fact that it's very difficult to repress or control it is still a way to justify a lot of things in a society. It justifies prostitution, it justifies porn, it justifies even assault or rape sometimes uh, because that's the only way we can channel this irrepressible sexual energy. Talking about prostitution, today 40 million people all around the globe at least are, are into prostitution. 75% of them are between the age of 13 and 25. And 80% of them are women. So we still have a lot uh, of prostitution, of sex trafficking, that we allow, that is every day in our streets uh, around us and we're pretty okay with it. Same thing goes uh, with sexual abuse. Sexual abuse uh, has a tremendous impact. One out of ten children um, is 
submitted to child sexual abuse before the age of 10 in the US. And if we look in Europe, 25% um, of girls and 15% of boys will be sexual abused before uh, they are 17. So this is massive, but we don't talk about it. We never really talk about it. And especially since our sex education is mostly done through porn. Porn is available everywhere online. And um, we know that uh, young boys have their first uh, learnings about sex through porn. What do we see in porn when most of the scenes portray either physical or verbal aggression towards women? Which image do they have about what is okay to do and what is not okay to do in a bedroom? And um, on top of this, um, the sex portrayed in porn movies is mostly sex seen through a male gaze. The final act of uh, a porn sex scene is mostly male ejaculation. So all the sex is orientated towards this. So at the end of the day, um, when we go into real life, we realize that this has tremendous impact on the satisfaction of both men and women in their sexual lives. This is what is called the orgasm gap. Do you know that 90% of men say they reach orgasm during uh, intercourse and only 65% of women? But what is funny is that this percentage is not the same when we talk about masturbation or when we talk about same-sex encounters. Lesbian women have more rate of orgasm than straight women. And this is not the case for men. So this really means that there is a lack of focus on women pleasure. So we really need to rethink the way um, we act as well in the bedroom. Which um, initiatives are trying to shift the sex balance? Well, first we have many initiatives um, on sex education. A website like Love Matters, which is all around the globe, in China, in India, in the Arab world, tries to uh, spread information on, on sex education. Or a different website like uh, Make Love Not Porn from the activist Cindy Gallup, which is comparing what you see in porn and what you see in real life and engage people to share experiences uh, of real sex life. There are different uh, activists who also try to challenge the myths and the taboo against menstruation, like Menstrupedia in India, which is a comic uh, trying to explain in a very colorful and easy way uh, what uh, what are the periods and how it works and in different local languages making it very accessible to anybody. There are products um, trying to answer women's needs like things uh, which are underwear specialized for women with periods or um, the rise of femtech um, which are different apps for example like Clue or Glow which track uh, women's fertility cycles. We even have a lot of women um, in the field of sex toys and developing different um, sex products, especially designed for women. And an interesting podcast to, to listen to is uh, called The Future of Sex and talking about different new trends in that field. But the most important part is uh, actually about women reclaiming uh, the power on their sexuality and uh, a growing movement of sex positivity portraying women's pleasure as uh, natural and sex as a healthy and fun uh, activity. There are different um, porn directors like uh, Erika Lust here in Barcelona um, trying to portray porn and sex with a female perspective. Or um, websites like OMJ Yes, which explains that after a, a long study, uh, different techniques uh, and more information about uh, female sexual pleasure. And then communities like Tamera in Portugal or Burning Man uh, in the US trying to explore new uh, ways of, of having sex. Because at the end of the day, uh, sex is natural, as we were saying, and the idea is to find 
to refine or relearn ways to enjoy it, to have fun. <laughs>